<laughs> Hello and welcome to another first ride review and today I am back on KTM's 2023 790 Duke. that's right for 2023 the original scalpel is back in KTM's lineup now this I think this disappeared in 2020 the bike first came out in 2018 I rode it in 2019 we have a Chinook making a lot of noise so it is a little bit different this year so um, this is actually manufactured in China in the uh, KTM's uh, partners factory CF Moto so they build these but overseen by KTM let's just go over some of the basics so we've got uh, these very KTM-esque looks. It looks identical to the uh, original uh, 790, which is a good thing because I loved that bike and how it looked. We've got the 799cc parallel twin motor, slightly revised this year. This is making slightly less power. Instead of 105 of the previous uh, model, this is making 95 horsepower, and that is so that it can be restricted to the A2 license uh, category. WP Apex suspension front and rear. We've got very angular bodywork. I like this new grey colour. We've got electronics. We've got this strange banana shaped exhaust. We've got uh, KTM branded brakes. Let's start her up first and have a look. So, a very small little dash. I think this is smaller than my phone screen, but uh, TFT dash looks very familiar. It's got a nice exhaust note. Oh, that does sound good. I like that. Totally stock as well. Right, so let's throw our leg over the 825 millimeter seat height. So there you go. I can almost flat foot it. Not quite, but I'm not far away. And for reference, I'm 5'8 with a 30 inch inseam. Ooh, dead, dead pheasant. Oh dear, that's a bit gross. The KTM. 790 Duke, the OG scalpel is back. Oh, oh yeah, God, that does pull your arms off a little bit. That's, this is why this bike was so popular. <laughs> so, oh yes, right. Parallel twin engine 799cc, 94 horsepower, and I think it's a 87 Newton meters of torque. So pretty decent figures with a 270 degree crank so it does sound rather good oh, lifting that front wheel in second gear on power that is fun we do have to be a bit careful because there's lots of gravel here double overhead cam it's got twin balancer shafts so vibes are very very minimal it's a lovely smooth engine Ooh, gravelly uh, suspenders we've got uh, 43 millimeter WP apex upside down forks up front completely unadjustable now these are essentially similar to Showa SFF because they have rebound and compression damping separate fork legs and at the rear we have a WP Apex Pro monoshock with preload adjustability braking wise we have KTM branded brakes up front <laughs> oh dear and those bite down onto 300mm discs and at the rear we have a twin piston caliper. I think it's a 260 mm disc at the rear. Let's talk about the chassis. The wet weight for this bike is 189 kilograms, so very, very light machine. I am going to have to overtake you, Mr. Wellington security man. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, you can feel that weight, or lack thereof. <laughs> love it, absolutely love it. We have a 14 litre fuel tank, which is not massive, but that's okay. It is meant to sip fuel and get decent economy. This being the first ride, I won't be able to tell you too much about that, but uh, I will do another video towards the end of the loan and we'll figure that out together. We've got a uh, fancy steel frame, chromium molyb denim or something like that. And we've got a subframe, which is uh, two made in two halves and stuck together very very impressive machining and the airbox is actually under the seat you can see the meshes on the side of the subframe and that just helps keep things cool 
while you're giving it the beans. We've got uh, aluminium tapered handlebars, 810 mil wide. They've got four adjustability settings, so you can change things to suit your shape and style. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Woo. oh yes! <laughs> I absolutely love this thing. Woo! Uh, we've got a, I think it's a five-inch TFT dash. Full colour TFT of course, it's not the new style that the 890s have but uh, you know they are saving a bit of money on this, this version so that's understandable. Uh, we've got a 6 axis IMU, probably a Bosch IMU and with that comes lean sensitive traction control and ABS. You've got three main riding modes, street, sport and rain. You can also opt for the optional track riding mode riding mode which allows you to tweak the throttle response wheel lift control yeah so plenty of electronics we've got led lights all around <laughs> each of those riding modes has preset kind of abs and uh, traction control but if you did want to fiddle with them you're going to have to buy the track pack it's got loads of grunt to it which you know, when you give it a handful, it will send that front wheel skywards, certainly in first gear and even in second gear. Right, so we're on the motorway. So, you know, it's a naked bike, you get lots of wind blasts, but it's clean air. Yada, 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 it's absolutely fine. Ergonomics then, the seat. I think they've improved the seat this year because it seems quite plush. I don't remember this seat feeling as plush as this one does. If memory serves me, I felt like the original seat felt hard at first. But this feels a lot softer, so I think they've perhaps increased the foam density or something. Knee position, of course, they are bent. It's a naked bike. It kind of goes with the territory. I feel like I'm lent over a little bit, but it's not real, not really any weight on my wrists. Yeah, I feel like kind of standard, standard sporty naked affair. The mirrors are okay, but I'm not a fan of this design. I think it looks a bit tacky. So I would have to get uh, some different mirrors. Now, I personally don't like bar end mirrors. I don't, just don't like them. Just a style choice for me. But I would have to change these. It's like a rubber Johnny, isn't it? <laughs> so the brakes don't have the most amazing bite but when you do lean on them, they do, they do stop you quite nicely. This bike also has the quick shifter, which is very nice, very smooth. Going up the box, what's it like going down? Yeah, a little bit clunky, but not too bad. Obviously, when you get on the boil, it is a bit smoother. The quick shifter is an optional extra. There is a track pack, which gives you the track mode. Uh, and also a tech pack which gives you a few different items and that is near enough 800 quid I think it's like 759 pounds or something so suspension then let's talk about that now I have gone on some bumpier roads and it it's got progressive springs so it is quite soft at the beginning of beginning at the beginning <laughs> at the beginning of the stroke and then as you would expect from the name progressive the, the uh, spring does get stiffer the more towards the bottom of the stroke you get. Um, I found it a pretty good setup for the road. Perhaps when you push it on some bumpy roads it might start to show its limitations. The rear seems perfectly set up for me and my weight out of the box so I haven't had to do any adjustment but if I was to take a pillion a pillion I may want to increase the preload a little bit just to get the uh, spring working in the correct area of operation. Um, agility, the bike feels... I mean, it's called a scalpel. They're not just going to call it that if it didn't handle like a scalpel. Just wants to slice up those roads. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. It really is light, as you would imagine. Um, definitely lives up to the name. And uh, yeah, the geometry seems very, very sorted. <laughs> yes! 
that is what these bikes should be about. I've already talked about the seat, but the actual ergos and comfort are quite lovely. I think this is one of the more comfortable motorcycles to ride in this category of the naked bike. The screen, while it is small, you can see everything very clearly. You've got a nice big speed there, you've got your taco, you've got the uh, different settings. So this one's got the time, temperature, ambient temperature I mean. Uh, your trip and your current range, so that's good, range to empty. You've also got a fuel gauge, a temperature gauge for the engine, or air, uh, what is it, coolant temp, and also a gear indicator, so very nice. Off-road review! <laughs> so, you've got the ride mode, you've got sport, street and rain, and this has got the optional track pack, where you can change the throttle response to track, sport or street. You can turn the anti-wheelie off, you've got launch control, and then you can leave track. Um, am I in track mode? I am in track mode, so let's leave track. Let's go to sport mode. Uh, we've got uh, traction control and slip regulation. Traction control is obvious, slip regulation is essentially to prevent the rear wheel from locking up. There's your ABS mode, you can turn that to supermoto, which allows you to do skids. Let's stick that in that one and see if we can do a skiddy. Um, trips and data, trips, general info, yeah, odometer. Um, and then you've got other settings, units, language, clock, DRLs, and then you've got quick select. You can set up quick selectors and favourites, which is what shows up on the front screen. There she is. There's your DRLs on the outside and your LEDs in the centre. So what do we think? I really like this grey colour with the orange kind of graphic. I think it looks really smart. It's a really small bike. It's quite compact. So we've got Supermax. Is it Maxxis Supermax ST tyres? Got their KTM. I think these are J Juan brakes. Radial mounted, of course. WP Apex forks, 43 millimetres. There's the beating heart of the machine. 799cc parallel twin double overhead cam. 95, 94-ish horsepower and 87 newton meters torque as i said you can get this restricted to the a2 14 litre fuel tank there's the subframe one well it's two piece so two pieces get put together and that forms the whole of the subframe very interesting very impressive that's the word air box is under there there's your die cast open lattice swing arm oh it's a single piston caliper at the rear not double i was thinking about the 890 adventure um there's the big banana exhaust but got a lovely sound to it. Uh, got a weird plate hanger thing which I would probably change that. LED indicators. Do we have hazards? No, I don't think we have hazards. This has got the optional quick shifter. You've got a chain guard. There's your pillion pegs. I would probably get rid of these and put a cowl on though. Seat is lovely. Really, really soft. Yeah, I like that. I think that's super comfy. These weird mirrors. I really don't like this Robert Johnny looking cover. Uh, span adjustable levers, uh, both clutch and brake, which is a nice little feature. So yes, built in China. So I'm sure I'm going to get a few comments about that. It's got a steering damper as well. Now pricing for this bike is 7,999 of your finest British, British pounds. So it's going head to head with the likes of the GSX 8S, the Honda Hornet. Certainly does compete with those two. We're in super motor mode, let's see if we can... Yes. We can skid up the rear. <laughs> Leaving big black steady. The engine is remarkably smooth. Once you get it above that kind of lumpiness at really super low RPMs it is very smooth. That's those dual balances is working. Working their magic and there's not really beyond the normal amount of vibes that you get from a combustion engine. It's hardly worth mentioning to be honest. <laughs> oh yeah those brakes aren't too bad. You have to lean on them quite a bit but yeah they are good. Oh the chassis on this thing. Utterly brilliant. I do have to remember I've got super motor mode. Maybe stay away from that back brake in the corners. 
<laughs> oh yes. Oh what a bike. What an absolutely corker. Can you tell I like this bike? What are the negatives on this machine? Hmm. Uh, let's think. So the engine is a little bit lumpy, low down. Uh, but we're talking about just that initial pickup. It is slightly lumpy. Uh, the suspension is not adjustable up front. So when you do push on, you might start to find the limitations. However, you can buy an upgrade to the suspension. <laughs> um, what are the other downsides? You do have to buy the tech pack to get all the, the fancy toys, like the quick shifter and the track mode. Um, so that's another sort of 750 quid, there or thereabouts. So it doesn't come with everything as standard. But you do get it free for the first 1500 miles, kind of like a try before you buy situation. Other negatives. Some of the bolts look like they might not do too well over a winter. But I am, I don't know that for a fact, so I'm just kind of guessing at this point. They, they look like they might get a bit furry. That's what she said. Another negative, which isn't the bike's fault, but it is a really fierce category. So you've got the Hornet, which is, you know, Honda, proven reliability. It's a bit cheaper, it's a thousand pound cheaper. Um, that's a cracking bike, it really is a good bike. I think this looks better, and this, this engine is a bit smoother. But uh, similar power, similar handling really. So that bike is very similar to this. You've got the GSX 8S, which I love the look of. I think it looks fantastic and it's a very comfortable motorcycle to ride. Feels like a bigger bike than this. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to spank it everywhere. Um, oh, you know, I'm really struggling to find other issues. No, I'm, good to, I'm just gonna be honest. I think it's a cracking motorcycle. It really is a really good bike. Woohoo! Oh. <laughs> right, look, I'm just gonna say it. I absolutely adore this bike. I think it is absolutely flipping brilliant. And for the asking price of £7,999, where do I sign? <laughs> yeah, absolutely brilliant love it right i think that's just gonna wrap this video up i'll do another video on this towards the end of the loan just to see if any of my opinions have changed but for now thank you so much for watching if you do go out today do ride safe but remember to have fun otherwise what's the point point? and until next time you take care and peace ta-ta